I'm gonna ask you some questions. How many are there? One guy inside the front door, second guy on the top floor. After the tone, please leave a message. It's done. A man called. He wants to see you right away. State Senator Albert Vato. His teenage daughter's missing. What's the lead? He got an anonymous text with an address. I've heard of these places. They said you were brutal. I can be. I want you to hurt them. Get up, can you hear me? My name's Joe. It's okay, come here. Close your eyes. Where are you going? Taking your dad. You got him. Yeah! Pick up the phone. What is going on? The cops are involved. Where is she? Don't worry. We'll get her. It's okay, Joe. It's okay. Hey friends, jolly good show. Welcome again to Rudy Land's Magical Mishaps, and of course, Chicaneries. Today we saw another film, much unlike the other ones that we saw. Um, best description, I was told it'd be like Taxi Driver. I would say it's like, the most apt analogy is this documentary I saw, Who Took Johnny?, it's about this lady looking for a kidnapped son who she believes was kidnapped by an international cartel of sexual predators and sexual and child sexual dealers. But a more um, film-based analogy would be prisoners. Just the the background noise. What's going on in the background? Prisoners. I got a little bit of the deer hunter in there. And uh, not so much Taxi Driver, but definitely a little bit with the uh, saving, you know, prostitutes angle from their pimps and whatnot. We saw you were not there at all. You were never really there. You were never really there. Starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Lynn... Ramsey. Lynn Ramsey. Yeah. And my God, this woman can direct. What's your immediate impression? I'm stepping out of there. Um, it's unbelievably shot. Just yes. like the, the the cinematography, uh, the, there's a scene. The subtle, the subtle attention to little details in the cinematography. And yeah. We'll get into that a little bit later, but right now um, we're just going to give you, you know. There's definitely a scene in uh, of, of kind of the poster of you know people floating in the water and just a lot of imagery. And um, man, one thing that maybe most people won't bring up, but man, the blood in this movie is so gorgeous like it is the perfect the scene red. where the it's old fantastic. guy sheriff type the guy who usually plays the lead captain let's say his boss that scene on the, when he's on the table with that the was bleeds? no later oh okay, that was yeah, remarkable yeah. man yeah. it looked yeah the practical remarkable. The practical effects are very very good in this movie no uh, just the shot it looks so fucking pretty man yeah um, yeah, the whole movie looks gorgeous, especially the last uh, the last third act. This is uh, the best movie I've seen in a while. In my immediate impression, go see it. Re fucking pre-buy it on Blu-ray and 4K Blu-ray just to be safe. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really had a good time with this one. It was the perfect amount of time. Like, it wasn't like a deer hunter... Not deer hunter. It wasn't like a taxi driver where... We spent a lot of time on one certain thing. Everything moved along very quickly. Every, you didn't have a lot of time to sit and dwell on things. Yeah, uh, this... Um, Except for one moment, which we'll yeah. get into later. Well, uh, one thing I will say is that, um, you know, we, we've, we've seen a lot of movies that just kind of uh, lazy writing, you know, just a lot of exposition. And this movie has zero exposition. It's the perfect exposition movie because... Everything told to you in the background. It shows and tells you everything. Yeah. Through visuals, yeah, it's all, and through action in the background, through 
you know, the way the character, you know, handles himself. Since that came it, up, you know, I'll, um, let's go back to my notes. In the very beginning, he leans up against this wall at the bodega and it says Domino. I see that and I'm like, oh, okay, he's going to, by the end of this, he will fall. That's pretty neat. It's pretty nice. It doesn't end up that way, but whatever. Right before he goes to... Right before the Asian girls take his picture, an Asian man walks across stream. His shirt says Lynchburg, very predominantly. Okay, we're about to lynch somebody. But the movie wasn't like that. It showed the. It didn't show any of the direct violence. No. It, you know? Most, most all it would cut away or it would hide it. You know, with framing. Yeah, it was, it was, it all, you, you see it after it's already happened. It's, it's already happened, the violence, and, and you just well, see it. you can see it while well it's happening. Like, well, he'll well. raise his gun, bang, bang, but you won't see the guy getting shot. You won't even see the guy yeah, while he's getting screen. shot. Yeah. It's, it's off-screen violence. So it's not like fucking Memento, you know what I mean? Like, we're not moving backwards here. I got worried for a second beginning that we might be moving backwards. Am I an idiot? Um, well, he did one thing with the book that I thought was... We'll save that for after. We're, we're gonna... That's I want to stick to... Yeah, but whatever. I want to stick to... Talking about going backwards. Just he was reading the book backwards. Yeah. And he was ripping page... He would rip a page off, and then he would read the book backwards. Okay. I didn't notice that. It's very astute, young yeah. Skywalker. <laughs> um... I want to, for the first, next three, four minutes, tell us, you know, in generalities, recommend, don't recommend. Um, you know, th this is a really well-made film. It's a complete mood piece. Yes, um, it's an experience. Yeah, and uh, this is really not going to be for everybody. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, Glenn Ramsey... You know, I, I didn't really like her first film, but it was well made. Very extremely unsettling. Well, the thing about this She's is... She's good at making very unsettling This films. one, it's like, it's artsy enough for the artsy crowd, but it's not slow enough for the theater crowd. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I, I think there's going to be people who are frustrated, because there are, there are a lot of scenes... You need to come scenes. out and tell them stuff? Is that what you mean? There's just a lot of scenes of him walking, and you're kind of studying him. At the beginning of the movie, you're kind you're of learning his patterns. Yeah, you're contemplating he, him, what just happened, what yeah. just happened with him. That's the thing, is that the whole, the, for the first, like, you know, quarter of the movie, you're just studying him. Which was really nice. The, and that's that's true. The first quarter of the movie is just learning about Joaquin Phoenix's character, Joe. Yeah. You learn about his movements, his mother. What he know, does. The people who he works for, the handlers. Yeah. You know, um... You know all of you know his tools, which obviously, if you've seen the, uh, the poster uh, of the movie, you know he is his weapon of choice is a hammer. Um, much and, like uh, much like the guy from Old Boy, he prefers to take swings with the hammer. Much I, like John really, Henry of yeah, old. <laughs> I really love the fact of when they just linger on the shot of at the hardware store when there's all these hammers and they just focus on the one that says "Made in the USA." That was and pretty cool. And that's the only one that he gets. Because, um... Uh, who would you recommend? That, keep Go on, but afterwards, tell us who would you recommend um, this to. Well, I would say uh, I do kind of disagree with you. I think this is, like, the perfect sister film to Taxi Driver. It's not yeah. Taxi Driver, but it is most certainly a sister film to Taxi Driver. Yeah. It's, it's, it's... Uh, I know that's an easy thing for a lot of people to say, but it really does feel like a more modern for me, version. Because there's so for many me, similarities. Taxi Driver, it was much more melodic. It, it puts you much more in a daze. Like, you're, it's there's moments where it's supposed to be slow. You're supposed to sort of get wrapped up in this, yeah. this I mean, strange world of Travis Driver. Bickle. Yeah, Taxi Driver is a way better movie than this. I'm Do you think so? Be, absolutely. It's absolutely not, way better? Not even fucking close. Okay. But, I mean, this is, this is a really well-made film. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I wasn't in love with it and I'm not going to say that I love this movie. Okay. Uh, I don't. Um, I, uh, as I was leaving the theater, I did, I, I want to see this movie again, but I want it. I need time. This is not a movie I want to see. You got to digest a little bit more I for need, sure. Cause there was yeah. a lot going on visually, you know, with the story. Yeah. And, uh. 
yeah, I mean, we won't get into kind of, um, you know, any of the spoilers, but there was, there is a twist we'll go, in the movie. We'll go down, we'll give a basic plot rundown after your little impression here. Um, my impression? Yeah, sure. Well, like, like I said. Who yeah. do you recommend it to? Uh, I would like, if you love violent movies, crime films, um, you know, obviously if you're, if you're a fan of Joaquin Phoenix, you're, he was, you really he was really it. great in this. He's very, very he's subdued. So, he's so versatile, man. Yeah, he's very, it's a very controlled performance. Not a lot though, of dialogue. He doesn't speak no, very often. No, it's, there's very limited dialogue and... And, like, right at the beginning of the movie, when you hear him doing, like, this low, grumbly voice, I was just like, oh, man, wow, okay, we're really getting into this. And um, the score, for me, was really incredible. Yeah. Um, Johnny Greenwood, um, who's in Radiohead, who who scores all of Paul Thomas Anderson's movies. He doesn't score a lot of people's movies, very few. That's, um, and, uh, the, uh, There Will Be Blood, done yeah. by Trent Reznor. Or Johnny Greenwood. Johnny I'm Greenwood not so did, sure did, right now. Blood. Are you he's, certain? He's done all Paul Thomas Anderson's movies. All right, I mixed them up um, with I mixed them up with him then. Yeah, and th yeah, this is incredible. This is um, like I mean, I think the F Phantom Thread score is better, but there is there's some really it really was very weird things going it was on very natural score. though. Like he was outside. Yeah. The, it was there was moments where it was supernatural, and then there's. I mean, supernatural and then there's moments where it's sort of off the wall like he's oh, yeah. walking around there's, traffic it's horns honking it's there's there's yeah you know that sort of thing there's definitely a lot of very interesting percussion uh, yeah and there's definitely some like reminded me of birdman the score a lot uh, i mean uh, there was some but more really, techno really more techno really experimental in some sections where it's really like out of tune Mm -hmm. You're hearing like these. Um, I thought it was very effective. That. Yeah, the score was very. Good. It's it's very unsettling because he's a very, very complicated person. Yes. So starting with that, we're gonna move to the little plot summary. It opens. He's in a motel. You know, yeah. starting fires, carrying a hammer around, running around. When that that opening scene, when you're just seeing him kind of burn this picture of a girl. Yeah, and you're like, whoa! You're it, kind of thinking, wait, is he? It takes you, you a second to figure exactly out what's going on. What he is, but when it comes yeah. to him with the girl at the airport, I'm like, okay, he just saved this girl. He's burning down the hotel. He maybe killed the guy, maybe hurt, killed the guys, maybe hurt him really bad. Yeah. He needs to get attention there for some reason or another. That's why he lit the fire. Yeah. But anyways, he does that. Then he gets another case. It's uh, the daughter of some senator. Yes. Roberto something. Juan Pablo Spicy Dong, perhaps. And everything's going fine. It goes just by the book. Gets the girl. Goes to the meeting place. Girl busts in NYPD officers. Abscond with the girl. One stays back to kill, uh, what's his name? Can he escape and, you know, save the girl? Or can't he? We find out, uh, you know, in a little bit. What, um, Joaquin Phoenix was, um, I really enjoyed him in this because, like, look at something like The Master. He, like, lost whatever crazy amount of weight, looked like a goddamn stick figure hominid. Yeah, he's, he's, and in uh, this one, he looks like a goddamn human tank. Yeah, he, uh, he bulked up for the movie for sure. Um, and he, he, he looks fucking menacing, you know? He's... Oh, He's just got this fucking. What I wanted to get into, but I forgot quickly, was he was the anti-hero, anti-anti-hero. Like he never did anything explicitly bad. Like there's nothing where I'm like, wait, come on, man, don't do that. Everything he did, it was sort of logical. He had to do it, but at the same time, he's doing bad things, and he's like suffocate I don't know if it's sexual or therapeutic he like uh, like, suffocates himself in um plastic well, bags right well I mean we can get that in spoilers um, it comes up pretty quick it's not really well I mean it's a childhood thing he yeah when he was a child okay because he had an abusive father who was he, in the military which makes this so much better for me because these so 
complicated. I don't know exactly how to feel about and it. It's all, you know what I mean? Do I feel sorry for him? Do I feel happy, you know, he's well, doing this stuff? I mean, or, I'll be honest with you, I don't think he's an anti-hero at all. <laughs> I get, no, that's what I'm all. saying. He's like a Travis reverse anti-hero. An anti he's like a reverse anti-hero. If he was a hero, he wouldn't be fucking suffocating himself. He wouldn't be fucking doing that weird shit. Like, that's... Yeah. That's Travis Bickle. That's the dude from, what's it called? Night, uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler type well, he's, stuff. He's a you know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, he's the villain, actually. You're right. He's the villain in that. But yeah, I mean, for me, you know, I mean, I mean, not to boil it down so simplistically, but I mean, listen, he's he's got some form of PTSD from not only his childhood, but from. You know, he's like a Gulf War veteran or an Iraq War veteran. I'm betting it was Iraq. Yeah. I'm thinking it was Iraq. One or, one or the other. And um, they they never go into his military pasts. The only just way you know about brief it. brief flashbacks. They, the first time you even see it, you just see him in his military uniform in a picture frame when he's seeing his mother for the first time. All the flashbacks, they, um, they either he happen when uniform. he's stressful. Not just yeah. the Army ones, but like. Just all the flashbacks yeah. in general. They either happen when he's incredibly so he's, stressed or yeah. he's like sleeping unconscious. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it and his uh, it feels yeah. organic. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it feels it, like it should be there. His form of therapy and, and calming down is putting the bag over his head. Yeah. Like that's how he calms down. Like that's how he 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 kind of controls himself because he's he's losing it. And one of the flashbacks is just so fucking disturbing. Yeah, we'll wait for that one then. Remember it though, because I can't yeah. think specifically what we're talking about. Um, there was there was quite a few that were kind of they were painting a picture of him not only through basically from where he came from as a child, but yeah. you know his army experience, his experiences with his mother, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, He's um actually yeah. caring for his mother. His mother's like a. 70, 80, 90 year old woman. Yeah, she's she's very old and, and all the actors are really good. His mom was really good. She was, had her very natural quality to her. Yeah, you she know? didn't seem like she was playing an old woman. No, she just felt like, you know, this, you know, definitely really older woman who may be suffering from some form of dementia, who is definitely... Um, she needs help. Yeah, she, she needs a lot of help um, and, uh, you know, he, he's obviously her caregiver. But you don't know if he, how much he's been checking in on her because there's a scene. Where, time, uh, um, time is sort of. The, uh, what happened? What scene? Why don't you well, go? You see it? a scene in the kitchen where he's going through her refrigerator. Yeah. And there's lots okay. of rotten food, so it's like. Does is he, he check up on check her? Does he check up on time? her, or does he just stop by? Does he just stop by every now and again? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing, um, because he doesn't live at home. Well, I mean, that's we never thing. really see his house. We don't see unless yeah. he lives with his mother, which we can plainly see he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't really. We never see a place for him. Yeah, it seems like he's always working or he's with his mother. Yeah, his job is to save, find um, exploited children and then save them. Yeah, and he gets paid under the table from. <laughs> yeah, it's all underground. some type of private investigator. Who he works for, um, we don't really get a clear. But he has an office. The guy who he works for. Yeah, he um, um, he seems like you know just standard. He's on the up and up, but he's gonna do what he has to do to get the job done. Yeah, and he has I mean? he has lots of weird like eccentricities, like with the jelly beans. Like that was just, that was something that in a, in a in a regular studio film that would have never been in. Yeah, would have been immediately cut they wouldn't out. even thought of it, or but, yeah, it would have been cut out. Yeah. So I mean, it's um, it's definitely you're not gonna see many movies like this, and uh, Amazon uh, basically kind of greenlit this, and they're putting it out in theaters, and this is gonna be on Amazon Prime if it for people who, the, because it's it's a limited release. This isn't gonna you know probably be near everyone. So if you do have Amazon Prime and you can't see it in the theater, you know you won't be able to see it at home, which. I think might be better. I hate saying that. Yeah. But Why do you think I, so? I, I just think this would be a better experience at home when you can just kind of be focused. Yeah. I was. I felt. I never felt like there's any real issue. For the most part. For the most part, it was a silent theater. Yeah. Yeah. I just the think, chairs weren't comfortable though. I they think, packed us into yeah. a, the small. The small. It was room. a bigger than the the. They didn't put us in the cellar, which was nice. 
I, uh, but it was but, still pretty small. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was bigger than the, the theater we were in. For, something uh, else about this. I, something I really like about the way this movie was shot is like when things when they want us to keep moving when things are happening the camera's always moving we're always cutting here cutting there but then when there's a moment where we're supposed to soak in the emotion sort of soak in what's happening think about contemplate what's going on what just happened it goes real slow and it's it gets really gets to you a couple moments yeah the the, the camera really creeps you know it, it's just it's like it's very ominous the way it's slow they slowly push in on things and yeah. uh, that that's really testament to you know great cinematography i'm not even familiar with this dp at all cool. what was the name of this dp I, uh, I caught it at the end it was like robert um like i might be saying his name wrong around town or something yeah but uh yeah i'm not familiar with him at all and uh yeah, I mean, this is just gorgeously shot. I, I don't know if they shot on film or what, but it man, looked incredible. It, yeah, it, it it really is extremely well shot. Um, do you want to go into the recommendations and then go into spoilers? Recommendations? Yeah, yeah, sure. What are we recommending? Dark movies? No, I mean, I'm saying recommendations. Oh, you recommend? I recommend yeah. everybody see this. I really enjoyed this. Everybody? Everybody? Really? Um, yeah. Um, I will say that even though this movie's 85 minutes long, it, it felt longer than that. It did. It did not. It. Um, it feels like a longer movie. Yeah, and, but I uh, thought that was in its in its yeah, betterment. It's, it's that not, was good um, for it. I didn't say it was a negative. Um, okay. You know, but uh, no going in because the way this movie tells itself, the way the movie tells itself, yeah, you know, it, it's gonna feel longer and. Um, it's very unsettling, so it, it you know, very effective for me. And violent films, you know, it's a recommendation um, if you're into that type of genre, which I the am. The cinematographer uh, Thomas Townen. Townen, yeah, I knew his last name. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. All right, so I guess it's uh, spoiler time. Ba -da -ba -ba -da, ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. Um, so before I forget, I'll, I'll go into the image. Um, he. Where he where he is in Iraq or whatever, there's a fence, and he gives this kid a candy bar. Oh and yeah! One of the other kids shoots the kid just to get his candy again. Bar. You don't see it, but it's very heavily implied. Shoots the kid. We see yeah. the kid on the ground, sort of shaking, having spasms and stuff. Well, that's the thing is that at the beginning of the movie, you see, you keep seeing this flashback of these legs going through the sand, spasming. And, yeah, and I was like. Did he Is get hit him? with an IED or yeah. something? And see the flashbacks, yeah. they make you work for it because they um they imply they do, one they don't show thing. Hardly any. It's so. Quick. And then when you get the reveal, it means something totally different. Yeah. I thought that was really neat. Because most time flashbacks, yeah. it's really obvious. Okay, it's the yeah. do it's a young girl, probably the lead actress, and it's an old man who's hanging himself. I bet that's her father. Yeah. Um. And I guess we'll get into kind of the ultimate spoiler, which is... Um, child sex, international, <laughs> national child oh, sex trafficking ring. Yeah, I, I loved that. Twist. Run by the governor of New York. I, um, the I, I dare... Senator. No, but run by the governor, Williams. He's uh, the one who ran right. it. But anyways, yeah, I, I dare not say this, but could there be real-world implications for the current governor of New York? Don't say its name. Who knows? Whatever you do. Um... But, uh, I'm gonna say without. I'm gonna say this purely speculatively. This is totally based on Governor Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Speculation. Well, uh, the story is based on a short story, so I don't know where the author's from. But this um, movie takes place in New York, New York City, to be precise. I never say that. We see. There's a moment where two a New York license plate pulls up, and it's really? like right center screen, and then. Mm -hmm. The new one pulls up, the yellow one right next to it. I don't know when the short story was written, so... Yeah, but well, this her, is a movie. This ain't the short story. Yeah. It's, the, it's the movie. Well... Aside uh, from whack job, crack nut, whatever <laughs> statements, let's, um, let's move on. Yeah, I, uh, I love the twist because the guy who plays the senator, when he's sitting there with Joaquin Phoenix and he says, Do you have children? Yeah. And he's talking to him and everything like that. And So the, the senator reveal, definitely was trading his, his kid around. I don't know if it was his kid at all. or He said it was his he favorite, okay. the guy says. Okay, all right. He said now it was I his number it. one girl. 
and uh, so the the whole fact of that he this this girl kept running away. They kept saying, "Oh, she keeps running away from him." So is and that why she was away? She ran away, but or did he trade her and somebody didn't give all. it back? It was just a girl that he took Had. and she would keep escaping. Yeah. And uh, that that twist, man. If you like this, great. if you're into that part of the story or you like that, watch um, Who Took Johnny. It's a documentary about this woman who um, she believes that there is verifiably evidence-based a um, national conspiracy to abduct and traffic in children. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, it's um. Uh quite you disturbing know, yeah very very disturbing film i i can't even imagine if you're a parent you know seeing movies like this um but uh yeah it uh, really really liked that twist um it was very good yeah because the movie the whole time leading up to it, it's like all right he's got the girl all right on to the next one nope Let's no. get into action. That's that's kind of the thing is that once he rescues her, I was I had no idea what time we were in in the movie. I was like, oh, I, I figured guess it's we were halfway. I, I really? thought that I thought too. We were, I, thought, but I, I thought maybe we, we had a few halfway. few more scenes, but that's um that 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 was something I definitely didn't see. Why didn't she react more when she said, "I need to take you. I'm going to take you to your father." Maybe she thought her real father. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And and she's obviously under some type of drugs because when you see her, she can't even like hear him at all, and she's counting. I like that counting that. down thing. Yeah, do you know what really it made me think that. of? Like when kids are abused, they do stuff like that. Just close your eyes, go to a different place, and count down. Joaquin yeah. Phoenix did that same thing whenever his uh, father was beating his mother and or him. Yeah. Which I thought was it's just little details like that that really that really sell a story, really get you into this into this world. I like that. Um, any other specifics you want to get to? Anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of negatives here. Um, I, I, hope, I will be honest. Well, I, I do want to, I do want to talk about one more thing is that the audience, you're all waiting at the end of the movie with the third act for him to kill the fucking Senator. You want that yeah, the whole suicide thing. Um, you want thing. the closure of him just yeah. beating and killing this guy. And I thought, well, he's going to kill him, but they'll probably do it off screen. And no, he goes in there and there's no closure for him. There's no satisfaction in any violence yeah. for him. The guy, the senator's I thought that just was, dead. That's, I thought that was a very good choice. I thought that was a really good Well, I mean, really it depends on what you're into. You know, I mean, if well, you it's just like, crime, that's what I go back to with this guy. I don't know how to feel about him, and he never gets to know what, it, he never gets his closure, you know what I mean? He never gets to know what it's like to have it either. At the end, he's sitting in a diner, and like, he starts crying, it's just dead center on his face, yeah. zooms on him, he's crying, and all around you could just hear a name chatter, and I feel like he's thinking, why the fuck can't this, I just be like that, just fucking talking about nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's he's completely alone uh, to some extent. Uh, and uh, the only contact he has is either fucking finding abducted children or to make him feel alive, to feel something. Yeah, or his mother. Yeah. Who, uh, and that that scene where I mean, he doesn't kill himself. Uh, See, the that problem really with that for, one was I lo really like that scene, but the problem with him killing himself is we all know you're gonna go back and save the girl, so. No, when he's in the diner, he's already saved the girl. And he, oh, okay, it's, that it's, one? It's yeah, I thought that was very good. blowing his brains out yeah. of the diner. There was a little bit of that, but not too much. It wasn't Birdman, where, like, you have to sort of figure out what was imagination, what was real, you know what I mean? To even compare them. Um, <laughs> the suicide right after he... All right, I'll get into it now, since I began. One of the best parts of this movie is the scene when he returns after everything's gone down. He goes to his boss's place. Boss is dead. Goes to the bodega. The bodega people burned him, right? Yeah, the the guy, um, the, uh, the the Mexican guy and the kid who yeah. saw him. They just yeah. discovered him yeah, going home one night just by chance. Yeah. And um, I think that that is what got him burned. That's what got his mother killed. Yeah. That's what I was leading to. He goes to his mother's house. 
I knew it was going to be the case because yeah, and and that really was a fact. That point. was the when, best scene because everything's moving so fast. Everything's moving so fast, and then it stops at that scene. Very Everything slow. goes so slow. We're going to soak in the death of his mother. Yeah, and and it's um, yeah when he takes the pillow off and and and. You just when he takes her glasses off because you know that's a nice call back to at the beginning when he takes the glasses off his mom yeah. and he thinks she's asleep. And uh, the game that they have together of saying the alphabet is, uh, you know, kind of really beautiful. Um, yeah, it was nice. It was a really good scene, effective. Yeah. And uh, he, he kind of repeats that. It reminded me, her death, seeing her dead body reminded me instantly of Mo Green. Hint, hint. Well. But, uh, and then um, the assassins are still in the house. It's not over. He doesn't get time to just sit there and take it in. He goes down the stairs, kills one dead, injures the next one. Next one's crawling away. He's trying to get information out of him. Stops him, turns him over, and he's talking to him. But he's not... This guy just killed his mother, and he's not, like, screaming. He doesn't he's know not if he killed beating. his mother. Well, he, he was there. which one. But still, yeah. he's the one who's alive. He's yeah. if anyone's going to get beaten for killing his mother, it's going to be this guy. There's some form of camaraderie there. That was um, really that was one of the best scenes I've seen in a while. Because that was really touching. He's a soldier, Joaquin, and this guy is literally just following orders yeah. of a government official. It was so he's being even though what that guy's doing is illegal and it's morally bad. He just killed that guy's no, mother. It's like talking about. Uh, I was I was just watching a movie recently. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, we were talking about, um, no, it was actually an interview, yeah. uh, where, um, a Vietnam vet was talking about how he had to put, you know, he was on a helicopter with Agent Orange, and yeah. he was, you know, he was hired to basically just send that over women and children, you know, that's yeah. what he was ordered to do, you know, for your country and shit like that, so. That reminds me of, uh, you ever see Blackfish? When um, the guy at the beginning, he's recalling capturing the baby orcas. I was about to say, yeah, the orca movie. I've never seen it. I, I've heard it's really good. It's it's I just it's really effective. I don't want to see it. I it's, I get it. Sea World's bad. It's just so fucking depressing. Well, I don't want to. Okay. Watch that shit. It's I would say if you haven't seen it, it's worth at least a watch. Yeah. For sure. If you're, I'm not a documentary guy, honestly. I love documentaries. Yeah. I love ones that aren't heavy-handed. I mean, it can be a little heavy-handed, the um, yeah. SeaWorld one. The, right as the guy's dying, after he gets the info he needs, there's a radio playing, and the guy, Joaquin Phoenix, is lying next to the guy who's bleeding, dying. And he's just sitting there thinking, all of a sudden we hear the guy next to him, and I will go home today, or, you know, something yeah, like that. He starts singing. Sing. I was almost, I was about to fucking cry, man. Really? That was wow. really, that really worked on me. Yeah, that, that was really good. That, that actually, that part didn't really work for me that much. He reaches, when he, then he great reaches for his hand right before he dies. That was really good. I liked how he wasn't like, what, who fuck killed my mom? Who killed, yeah, which it, one of you killed my mom? It doesn't, which one was it? Yeah, it doesn't go into that cliche, um, uh, you know, way. And, and listen, you know. You know, I'm I'm a person. You know, I, I like the bloodletting, so I want to see the gore. And there is one headshot in this movie, which is fucking fantastic. Which well, headshot? Two headshots, actually. Both of them are really good. But the one where the guy uh, who works at the hotel gets shot in the head. Oh yeah, that was really, really good. Like, oh man, that was amazing. Because and, you uh, don't know what that's before really, you. What the, the turn, fuck is going that's on? That's when the turn happened. Yeah, it's that's, very good. That's when you know that some some real bad shit happened. That was, guy was a cop too. Yeah. Dead sure silencers works. and stuff. Was there? There was something you started getting into before we went into spoilers. Do you remember it? No, I uh, I saved it for for spoilers. Right? We we already talked about it. The um uh, the scene with the kid with the candy bar. Okay. Yeah, I think I did. So. All right. Just yeah. um, trying yeah, to be thorough. Trying to think of things, but uh, I think we pretty much went over it. It's uh, Lynchburg. Lynchburg yeah, and see, I, uh, I didn't notice those things. Domino. That's. It turns out that the girl was the domino. The girl was leading to this huge governmental linked child sex ring. So I was wrong about that at first. But it could be meaningful. It could not be. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Yeah. Um, Death song. That was my notes on the guy after he got shot and he was singing. Um, 
The only two movies that were playing were Psycho and Shawshank Redemption. When the girl, the first time when the girl was released, that's what was playing. It was the scene where Red and, what was the name? Andy. Red and Andy were talking about the Pacific Ocean on the inside. See, they I say the Pacific Ocean is so blue. movie character names. I never retained I just retained dialogue, things. little details. I remember that scene. Very specifically, Psycho. They came out and they tell you it's yeah, Psycho. They, they I couldn't place it. Yeah. Which that 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 is a reoccurring thing of him going, eh, eh, which that didn't work for me either. Um, well, it was just sort of. I, I mom, feel like it was just sort of the banter. the bonding with the mom. It was showing that hey, we can talk, still yeah. talk about whatever. Yeah, I can say shit in front of her, and she's not going to get they're offended. They're building up scenes because she's going to die, and they want you to have some attachment. Her death scene was really effective. It really worked, because it just comes to a stop. Well, you know you she's dead. To, yeah, I know. You know it 100%. But when you get there, yeah. it worked really well for Yeah, me. like I say, the, the shot of him taking her glasses off and putting them on the mantle and just seeing the whole... Those bright red glasses. Yeah. Were glasses red before? I don't know. No, I think that was just the blood. Okay. That's really good, too. Because I didn't see your glasses earlier when he took them all. Yeah. So, uh, you want, anything else you want to talk about or you want to do final ratings? I'm trying to think of something else. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really liked it. I liked how short it was, but it didn't feel too short. I liked that. Yeah, no. It, it reminded me of... Um, yeah, and, and this is going to be a weird comparison for people, but when I saw Gravity uh, here in IMAX, which is only 90 minutes, the movie felt way longer than that. And once again, not in a negative sense, but it was just like, it's, it's, that's the special thing about movies is that you go, oh, a 90 minute movie could feel like it's four hours long yeah. if it's not well made. And you know a four saying? hour movie could feel like it's 12 hours. Yeah. And a three hour <laughs> movie could feel like it just went by in 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's about, it's, it's one of the special things about Getting into movies. the world of the story. Yeah. And then becoming engrossed in it. Yeah, absolutely. I would sell final ratings time and then we'll give some recommendations, I suppose, on... I love the acting, I love the writing, I love the dialogue, I love the camera work, the score was impeccable. I like the story. I definitely want to see it again in theaters. I'm going to definitely see oh. it at some point again. Well, you're going to have to see it again quick because this is not going to be here yeah, for very I know. Long. I... We'll go, we'll go eight. We'll go this is an eight. I want to say nine, but I just haven't seen a really good movie in theaters in a while. I mean, really dark, serious movie in theaters in a while. And that's exactly what this was. Yeah, um, Joaquin's good in the movie. I It's not my favorite performance of his. I think he's been better. But, okay. uh, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of care in the filmmaking. Like you say, you know, cinematography's phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, the score is, is great. It's, it's it, just like, you know, I brought up Phantom Thread score. Uh, it's it's definitely one I do want to listen to um, in my own free time. I'll probably definitely download this one. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's a really good movie. I I give it a seven out of ten. Okay. You know I I'm I'm not I'm not in love with it. I was I was really this was one of my most anticipated. Um, I had no antis again. I had no anticipation. Yeah. I didn't even hear about it. And. Um, you know, it's it's definitely one that I'd probably revisit in maybe five years or so. You okay. know, three, five years. Um, I definitely want time. Yeah. Because it's... Uh, uh, it's very dark. It's yeah. like we were talking about the other day. Didn't we recommend talk about, like, movies that make you feel dirty after you see them? Yeah, I, I didn't necessarily... You didn't get that? I didn't necessarily feel dirty. I can understand where you come from with that. Yeah. But it's just, like I said before, well, just it's such a mood piece, you know? He doesn't get to, you want to know why he doesn't get to kill the guy? Because the little girl fucking slits his throat for him. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that's the spoiler, but, you know. That, as the audience, you're waiting for that. You're waiting for him. You want that, cath the, the catharsis of him Seeing him killing. beat this guy with a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't give that to you because Lynn Ramsey, she, that's not the movie. That's yeah. not the movie she wants to make. And, um, she, you know, she had a very specific vision, you know, and, and I'm, that's something that, uh, you we know, need I, more of. yeah, you need people with actual vision and, um, 
you know, I'm definitely interested to see what she does next, for sure. You know, I, like I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of her first film. Uh, well, it wasn't her first film, but uh, her last movie, we need to talk about Kevin. But um, I thought it was okay. That yeah. was good, I guess. Another good mood piece. Um, really. Dark, Another experience. Disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're along for a ride. Yeah. With this one and with that one. Yeah. And so she's, we need to talk about. Kevin. She's obviously a really good uh, director of actors. You know. So. So for recommendations, I have dark movies involving child murder, abduction, <laughs> or sex trafficking. First, a little movie by maybe Anton Fuqua. Prisoner, starring Jake no. Gyllenhaal. Denis Villeneuve. That's, I knew it was somebody French. Denis Villeneuve. He's French-Canadian. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking free Montreal. Free Quebec. <laughs> Woohoo. I don't give a fuck. Hey, get right. <laughs> Prisoner, starring Hugh Jackman as a father whose daughter has been kidnapped. His best friend, Terrence Howard. Daughter also kidnapped. Frantically looking for Jake Gyllenhaal, the officer in charge, set to find them. In their hands, they have a young boy with a learning disability who's creepy, who's weird, and has an RV. So should they torture him to get the info? Or let the cops do it? Prisoners. Yeah, Prisoners is... Uh, Very dark. Prisoners is really good, I mean... That's an experience. That one you're designed to just feel fucking that, I mean, sick. Not sick, but just feel appalled yeah, the I, entire time. I, I really that, like that. I saw that movie in the theaters. It's one of the best theater experiences I've had. I wish I saw it in theaters. It, I, seeing the color Roger is so Deacon's dark. It's perfect. Oh my God. It was incredible. And I'll tell you, there, there's a scene in, in, uh, in Prisoners where Jake Gyllenhaal smashes a fucking keyboard and it's not cliche or stupid at all it's fucking incredible you got a big surprise coming <laughs> <laughs> I, I he's so fucking phenomenal in that movie Jake Gyllenhaal I love him and Hugh Jackman's great he's definitely that's channeling. one of his what is give me a better role than that for Hugh Jackman uh, I would definitely say that's his best performance yeah. easily and I mean listen he's He's definitely channeling he Sean actually, Patton, he shows, Mystic River. But he does show fucking range. Yeah, absolutely. He, you can, he's like, there's sad yeah. moments, there's fucking... Get my daughter! Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's fantastic, and, and, and really everybody. Terrence Howard. I Terrence really Howard, like, in the Tyler moment Davis. when they're outside that bathtub, and he's like, no, yeah. nah, man, yeah, I'm just gonna go. I've always been a big Terrence Howard fan. He's though. very good. I wish he was in more stuff. Well, he's on Empire. It's a huge show. Well, have you watch watched it? it? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really. I'm not that into it. I have no interest. But um, yeah, he that. I mean, Paul Dano is so creepy in that movie. I love Paul great. Dano. He's usually fucking awesome in everything I've seen him in. Yeah. I, um, um. Yeah. That that's that's a really a a phenomenal film. Uh, love it. And man, like I say, one of the best theater experiences. And as soon as I saw that movie. His, uh, Denis Villeneuve's very next movie that he did, Anime, which was also with Jake Gyllenhaal. I literally drove 50 miles to see that movie. What'd uh, you think of Anime? Uh, I, it was, I, you know, I, it has that David Lynch vibe to it. Okay. Uh, it's, um, I didn't see it, so I, I I think it's really incredible and interesting. Um, yeah. It's a, I'm actually going to be buying it. It's on sale for nine ninety nine on Amazon. You're going to let me borrow it? <laughs> I remember Erotic seeing like a poster. Movies. Is it Jake Gyllenhaal sitting like on a throne in like a weird purple? No. Okay. No, there's no purple in the entire movie. Is there a weird color? Like the poster is what I'm talking about. Is there like a weird tone to yeah, it? There's a lot of yellow. It's, it's okay. Very yellow. Humidity. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Of. Uh, yeah, it's very, very another. Is mood that your piece. dark recommendation? No, nah, I'll. Um... Involving child <laughs> no, abuse, there's no, there's no... sex trafficking, I'll, or uh... <laughs> murder. I'll uh, bring up a sex trafficking movie called uh, Spartan. It was directed and written by... I saw that a while ago. I don't remember much about it. Directed and written by David Mamet. Uh, I saw it in a theater with my dad because I was a big Val Kilmer fan. And um, insanely dark movie. Uh, I don't see that's the again, thing. I don't remember much about it. It was like child and sex trafficking. Was yes, it like it was also... Michael Douglas's daughter or something? No, I don't think Michael Douglas was in the movie okay. at all. I saw it a but, long time uh, ago, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, once again, another movie about an important uh, child being taken. 
uh, taken and having to be rescued. Um, Liam and, Neeson shows up about halfway through, and he says, I will find you, yeah. and I will Spartan you, whatever that means. But, uh, yeah, Val Kilmer's really good in that, and that was kind of... Um, those are kind of the last few years of Val Kilmer, like, actually doing serious work. And then he just he... started doing a lot of blow, and he blew up, quite literally. Yeah. Speculation blast. Working with 50 Cent in every movie. Seriously? Yeah. I feel bad for a multi-millionaire actor Bro, who threw it all really away. feel bad now. He can't even fucking talk, and he had, like, half of his face cut off. I saw that. I remember that now. I yeah, saw it in, uh, like somewhere. like, cancer or tongue cancer or something. Yeah, it's awful. It's very sad. Oh, yeah, the movie we saw reminded me a lot of Chinatown, too. Oh, God. <laughs> no, just, you know, sort of, no matter what he does, everything goes bad. Up until the end, that is. I was about to say, does everything really go bad? I mean, I, I don't know. I think one thing goes bad. He loses his mother. He loses his well, business partner. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the okay, daughter's yeah. supposed father turned out to be her her abuser. Yeah, well, that's that, that's that's the main thing that goes bad, yeah. and then it's it's just a snowball effect from that. And then some yeah. clandestine organization of sexual predators tra aims to murder him and re-kidnap the girl well, just, back into a life of senator. sexual servitude. The, the governor. Whatever, governor Williams. Andrew I'm Cuomo. sure they said senator. But. No, the, father, the fake father was a senator. The guy who he was going to kill at the end was a governor. Know. Governor Williams. That's why he was outside the goddamn building that said re-elect Governor Williams. Yeah, Governor. Yeah, I didn't remember seeing that. I'm trying well, to there think. Was two, of the, two of the guys really looked a lot alike, and I was like, Ugh. Well, Did one I... was supposed to be Hispanic. He looked like a totally a white guy. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Um, How about another so uh, dark movie from me? Super dark, oh. super gritty. Um, We'll go with The Deer Hunter. I really like The Deer Hunter. It has one of the darkest, grittiest endings in, uh, that I can recall. Yeah. Sad, tragic. Deals a lot with... It is actually... It's kind of about PTSD in a way. Absolutely. Sort of before they talked about it a lot. They never talked about it, yeah. Um, All-star cast. One Michael Cimino. His uh, only Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Christopher Walken. His... One of his best roles by far. Hadn't done much at that point. He won an Oscar for it too. Best yep. supporting best actor, actor, Robert De Niro. He lived in that Pennsylvania, in like Pennsylvania Steel Country, for like a month or two before filming started. Didn't uh, didn't Meryl Streep won for uh, best supporting actress? She could have. Run? She was really good in it. Pretty sure she did. Meryl Streep. She's incredible. In John that, Cassale is in it. Fucking. Who else? The other guy. I can't remember his name. Never mind. Didi Mao. Deep mouth. I don't own that movie. I own it. I own two copies. I own an English copy or European yeah, one. Yeah, it's one of those movies where I'm pretty sure they're going to do the 4K scan. I have like the 100th anniversary edition Blu-ray yeah, or something. Not, it's always like 10 bucks. So I was like, yeah. Because yeah. it's just one of those classic movies that yeah. if you haven't seen it or you don't own it, you should at least see it or own it. Yeah. That's just my opinion. It's not one of those movies where I don't have Super so slow. Yeah. Super slow. You got to take your time. He's giving you a lot of information. He's not coming out and telling you. Yeah, okay. It's one of those movies where I want years in between saying it. I'm not. Yeah, I can understand that. It's very depressing. It's one yeah, of the most extremely. depressing films you can watch, which I'm always down for. <laughs> like a real downer. Well, it's just because I'm so amazed you can get so wrapped up in this and then get so emotionally attached, even though you know it's just a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this one earlier, when um. Right after the, right after the hitman dies, hitman, FBI agent, whatever he was, dies, and he's going out to fucking sink his mother at sea. Yeah, that's that was really that was touching. Really great. That was that, that that was just unbelievably shot under the water. I love that. I it looks so that surreal, that. man. Unbelievable. It looks so surreal. What uh, do you have? Any other dark, gritty child? Mine didn't really have anything to do with child, did it? Yeah, I was about to say Chinatown and Tear Donner don't really. Um, people, <laughs> people are. Ex oh yeah, because the daughter, the daughter. I guess. He's gonna re fuck the daughter at the end of Chinatown. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense, even if you haven't seen Chinatown. Yeah, so well, watch it anyways. Well, yeah, I mean. Look. Chinatown is. I can make an wrong. argument for any of my points. Just, <laughs> I'm such I, a prick. I, I, I think that I think that script is totally overrated. I don't think it's that good. Yeah. I, I think Roman Polanski and Jack Nicholson make that movie. And that's it. Okay. 
I think the whole center plot of in the my Chinese opinion, is like... The Chinese has nothing to do with the Chinese. Not... not, not we, do you want to someday do a Chinatown talk? Yeah, well, maybe we'll do it. We'll do a Chinatown so talk because I have a lot of opinions about Chinatown. Yeah. Give me another uh, dark, gritty one, and then we'll um, let these fine folks get back to uh, hitting the moonshine. <laughs> the or moonshine. drinking or huffing gas fumes. Uh, I don't care what you guys do, frankly. Man, yeah, this, uh, the sex trafficking genre is not, not my favorite. Eight millimeter? Uh, yeah, well, that, that, that is... No child. Kind of well, they brushed on the child yeah, stuff they yeah, bring it up yeah. they actually have an australian blu-ray of it but it's just so fucking expensive i got the blob australian blu-ray region free it looks yeah, pretty I hope good you got the good copy because there was a, they they fucked up and they had to do replacement copies so there, there were mine some looks bad pretty good first mine looks pretty good so, yeah i've been thinking about getting it recently but um yeah, it's tough because we've we've kind of talked, we've done this before of the real gritty movies. It's uh, I love that genre so much. How about uh, Zodiac? Why don't we leave him with Zodiac? Yeah, I mean Zodiac and Prisoners are a good kind of double feature. Um, super dark. Yeah. Super even mute. even the clothes, the Didn't surroundings, Zodiac, super probably. muted, probably. But we gotta Maybe wrap not. this up somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal, once again, he was like 21 when he did that movie or something. He you, was, I like, often forget how young he started, but yeah, he's he's, he's, he's had a really solid career, man. He's put out some real gems. Yeah, he was phenomenal in that. Robert Downey Jr. is fucking great. Just, um... And all the killers are very... All the, the people that they spotlight, yeah. all the people they look at, they're very menacing. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's I mean... You know, it's a long the death movie. scenes like are very effective too. The death scenes are um, fucking impeccable. Yeah, the beginning when I used to shot in the head right in the car. Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, and it's it's not a movie about answers. You know, it implies who they think might have been the Zodiac. It's like but we still never. It's know. like the Zodiac's code. It's like they give you all the pieces, but you're gonna have to decipher this. You know you're what I mean? Have to, Assume you have yourself. to figure out yourself what you think happened. They never caught him, and they never really knew who it was. And they're probably never going to catch him or yeah. figure out who it was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, really, really well shot. I fucking I haven't watched it since I bought it. I have it too. Um, My copy is like it looks like a, a letter to the San Francisco Herald. Yeah, or whatever. it's really, um, really great. Yeah, just uh, great score. If you're a person who just goes to movies to listen to good music. They have a lot of good tracks on there. They got uh, that Marvin Gaye. Now what's going on? Mother, mother. I can't think of it. Whatever. A lot of great tracks. So, uh, how's about this? You want us to go and uh, track down those sexual predators in the New York State government as we speak? I'll get my hammer. I'll get the goddamn blowtorch. Hot fire. Thank you.